Praise the Lord. Greetings once again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God is good, and we give him thanks for another Sabbath. Praise God. Greetings to everyone online in Jesus' name. Praise God. I hope everyone is fine. Welcome. Praise the Lord. God is good, and we give him thanks and praise that we are alive. Praise God to his grace and his mercy, you know. I've been asked to teach the lesson for the first time. So I'm asking God to help me, to guide me, because I cannot do it by myself. I need his help. Praise the Lord. So our topic today, how to obtain a pure heart. And we know we're not talking about the fleshy heart so much. Our aim is the, the inner man, because this flesh is going to perish. Praise God. But while we are living and hurt, we should have a pure heart. And because the Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, because they shall see God. So as children of God, we should be pure in our heart. Praise the Lord. So greetings once again. Uh, I'm going to read uh, Revelation 20, Revelation 3 and verse 20. Could you read from me, Sister Gip, please? Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me praise god so here we see the son of god giving to men an invitation that if he come to your heart door and he knock and anyone opens that your heart he will come in praise god and he will sup with you amen so it's very important to let god come in our heart and he will do the work because we have ourselves we cannot uh, have a pure heart of our own self. We need help. And Jesus Christ is the one who has the way and know, the know-how to give one a pure heart this morning. So he said, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man, praise God, hear his voice and open the door, he will come in. Praise God and will sit with him. And the process will begin. Praise God. Once we let him in and we allow him to stay in our heart, then he will do the, the, the cleansing for us. Praise God. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. Praise God, 11 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 reads... And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hear, hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. Praise God. So here God is telling anyone, if he will and it shall come to pass, praise God, if he will hark in diligently. You see, this word diligent, it means to work hard, to show care, praise God, and to show, to, to have effort. So in serving God, it calls for care. Or to obtain a pure heart, it calls for care. We want us to show that they are care. Amen. We cannot be like the careless Ethiopian. The Bible said the careless Ethiopian. We cannot be careless towards our salvation or towards, praise God, receiving a pure heart. Praise God Almighty. We need God's help. Praise God. So once we seek him diligently, praise God, with effort, with care, then he will do the process for us. Praise God. And when you do his commandment to love the Lord, your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Praise God. When you begin to serve God with all your heart and all your pure, 
your, your, your soul, what will happen to you? The things of this world will become tasteless. You will have no desire for this world anymore. Praise God. You just live in it because, praise God, and almost say it, because glory to God, you have to live here. Praise God. The Bible also say, says, set your, your heart or set your mind on things above, not on things on this heart. But when you set your heart, praise God, towards God, then God will fix your heart. God will come in, praise God, and make you, your heart new. Praise God, so you can have a pure heart towards your fellow men. Praise God, towards doing his will. Praise God Almighty. The Bible tells us here also that added according to the definition, pure, clean, clear. Praise God. Glory to God. Ah. Praise God. So when you have a, a, a pure heart, your heart is clean towards your fellow man. Praise God. Your heart is clean even towards someone who hurt your feelings. When you see them, praise God, you can welcome them from a free heart, a free mind. Praise God. The Bible says Joseph's brothers, they could not speak to him peaceable because their heart weren't pure. Hallelujah. So when your heart is pure towards God or your fellow man, Praise God, you're glad to see them. It doesn't matter what they have done to you two years ago, five years ago. Praise God. When, when you see them, your heart is happy to see them because your heart is clean towards them. Praise God. So, praise God Almighty. Let us go to Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6 also. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, reads, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Amen. So here the Lord promised to circumcise those hearts who love him. Pray that when you love God, God will fix your heart. We know that God gave to Abraham circumcision that was done outwardly by men. But this circumcision, it is done inwardly by the power of the Almighty. Praise God, because God, none of us can go in our heart and remove the foreskin of our heart. Only God can do that. So we have to, give, when we give him the chance, praise God, and he fix our heart, praise God, to love him. And not only us. You know, in the Bible, there was this man, I think it was J.U. He went out to do a work for God. And God said he did the work perfectly, but his heart weren't right. But God made him a promise. God said, your children will sit up on the throne of Israel just because of what his father did. Even though he didn't do it from a perfect heart, God promised, glory to God, that his children would sit up on his throne. So when we as parents do please God, then it go over to our children and God will circumcise our children's heart too. Amen. To do his will, to keep his commandment, to live. Because God is, is the one who do it. Praise God. God is the one who removed the forest skin. Praise God from our heart. So our heart will be clear. Our heart will be able to perceive what is good. And carry out the will of God. Praise God Almighty. We're going to go over to our other scripture, which is 1 Samuel 12, verse 24. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24 reads, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. 
for consider how great things he has done for you. Praise the Lord. Only fear the Lord and, he, and serve him in truth with all your heart. So when you, you serve God with all your heart, praise God Almighty, then God will take care of you. God will fix your heart. God will allow. I think God, when he calls, um, what's his name? King Saul. The Bible said God gave him a new heart. So when you fear God, when you put God first, God will fix your heart to love him. And that's what we want. When you care about God, you always think upon the Almighty. Like in Isaiah uh, 26 and verse Three, it says, keep your eyes or your mind stayed on God and he will keep you in perfect peace. So when our heart is stayed on God, God will keep us in perfect peace. God will keep our heart clean. Praise God. We will not have the things of this world in our heart, cumbered in our hearts. So the Bible is right. Praise God Almighty. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. So the Bible is not recommend us, recommending us to serve God pathway, but we should serve him with all our heart, all that is within us. Amen? And then God will fix our heart, remove from the, the things that in our heart that will hinder us, the things that will cause us to dislike our fellow men. Praise God, the things that are negative, the things that would cause us to lose our soul. God will remove it so we can have a clean heart. For consider how great things he had done for you. God had done great things for us. Praise God. And all he want for us that we allow him to be in our heart daily, minutely, Having a pure heart is not only when we come on Sabbath, we consecrate ourselves. It's a lifestyle. Every morning you wake up, you, you set your heart to serve God. You think upon him throughout the day. You, you commune with your own, your heart, or commune within your heart. One scripture says we must make melody in our hearts, singing, praise God, with spiritual sound. So that's another way to cleanse our heart by singing spiritual songs, songs that give glory to God, songs that cause God to smile, glory to God, songs that God appreciate. Amen? Amen. Our next scripture, we're going to go to 1 Kings 3 and verse 9 and 12. 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 9 reads, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Amen. So here we see King Solomon, he asks God for an understanding heart to judge his people. So other than and um, we see here that King Sol God came to King Solomon in a dream. And God, he told him that he asked God for a heart, to, for understanding heart. And God gave it to him. Praise God. So sometimes in our prayer, most times in our prayer, we should pray for and ask God for a heart to, to please him. A heart. To, 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 to do the things that he require. Praise God. Because we cannot serve God with a heart that is not perfect. So King Solomon asked God. He said, thus said the Lord. Here. Praise God. I lost that scripture on um, Samuel, first Samuel. First. Samuel. Yes. Oh. First Samuel. First Samuel, okay. Yeah, read it Absolutely. one more time for me, please. First Samuel. Mm -hmm. First Samuel, 
Yeah, first Samuel twelve. Twelve twenty-four. First Samuel twelve twenty-four. Only fear the Lord and serve him right. with truth. In truth with all your heart. Right. Or consider how great things he has done for you. Praise God. Praise God. Only serve the Lord in truth. Praise God. Go back to some um, first, first Kings. Kings. First Kings 3, 9 and 12. First Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people. Praise God. So, some King Solomon asked God to give him, excuse, an understanding heart so he could judge his people. So, in prayer, in praying, we should ask God for a pure heart. Just as though King Solomon asked God for a heart of understanding to judge his people. As children of God, we are to ask God for a heart, a pure heart, to do his will. Because when your heart is pure, it's a wonderful thing. It's sweet. God, you wake up in the night, sometimes song play in your heart by the Spirit of God. Songs, I think in, in Psalms, it said, God give um, compass him, David said, God compass me with songs of deliverance. So when you ask God for a pure heart, he will do it <clears throat> because he is able to do all things. Whatever is impossible for man is possible with God. So God wants us as his people to have a, to have a pure heart. And when we have a pure heart, then we we will be happy, we will feel joy, we will feel peace. We will be happy always, even when we are going through turbulence. Praise God, because the joy that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So only in a pure heart, praise God, the joy of the Lord can dwell. It cannot dwell in no other heart than in a pure heart, the joy of the Lord. And when you have the joy of the Lord in a pure heart, then it becomes your strength. He carry you through rough times. Praise God. Sometimes you're going through some stuff and people wondering about how come you deal with this. But it's not you because greater is he that is in you. And he is the one who is carrying you through the rough sea, the turbulence. Glory to God. The time ups and down, when everybody turn against you, praise God. God is working in that pure heart to bring you through. Praise God. All ups and down, all obstacle. Praise God. All the fire. Praise God Almighty. Because God is able, praise God, to dwell in that pure heart. Amen. To guide you through fire, whatever it be. I glory to God to guide you through the ups and down, the obstacle. Hallelujah. When everybody turn against you, praise God. I sometimes the world turn against you, your wife turn against you, your husband turn against you. But because you have a pure heart, and I, in fact, that's when you prove that you have a pure heart, when everybody is against you, but you can love them. Glory to God. You can hug them from a free heart. Amen. So read on for me, please. Verse First, First Kings chapter 3, verse 12. Yes. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, mm. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. Amen. Stop for a moment. Praise God. So here God is saying, Behold, I have done it according to thy word. God is saying, I have done it to Solomon according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. 
so God says to Solomon, I have done it. Amen. And just as though Solomon prayed, we also should pray and ask God for these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we spend our time praying for a husband, which is good. Praying for a wife, a house, a car. It's good. But we have to spend more time working on us. Asking God daily to fix us so we can please him. Amen. Fix our heart. Because the heart that we come into Christ with, we cannot serve Christ with that heart. Our heart got to be pure. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise God. So when we transform by the renewing of our mind, uh, things will not trouble us that much. Praise that we won't be easily offended. Praise God. And also, when we have a pure heart, we got to know to protect it. Praise God. You know, I went out sometime to work among some early and, and they were playing their early music. And when I got home, this, these songs were playing in me. I didn't feel good about that. I began to pray. I said, no, you know, melody must be in my heart. Praise God. So God gave Solomon a heart of understanding. Read so. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Amen. So that was, a, that was given to Solomon, that no other king was like him before and after him. Excuse me. So I am saying today that ask God to fix our heart. Fix our heart. Take away malice, grudge, envy, all of these things. If these things be in us, the Bible says we shouldn't glory. Amen. So each individual has to know his or her heart. How do I know my heart? Sometimes I stay silent and I listen to what is going on in my heart. How what my heart is uttering. Is it uttering the right thing? Is it saying the right thing? Is, it, is my heart after God, godliness or just my lips? So these things are questioned as children of God. We have to ask ourselves, glory to God. How is my heart? The Bible says over here in Psalms, praise God Almighty, Psalms um, 51, and I believe verse 10, he said, create in me a, a clean heart, O God. Create in me a pure heart. Amen. Renewing a right spirit within me. We understand that was after David's sin. But we don't have to go there. We don't have to sin. But we can ask right now, praise God, for God to create in us a pure heart. Like I said before, that this circumcision, this renewing of the heart is not done by us. It is done by God. And you work on the inside. Praise God. So when our heart is pure, when God fix our heart, then we become obedient. Praise God Almighty. People, someone don't have to talk to us too much. We give less trouble. Praise God Almighty when we have a clean heart. Because God is the one who fix our heart. Praise God. The Bible says, establish my heart in righteousness. So when our heart is established in pureness, in righteousness, then God can use us. Praise God. In John 1 John 3, 3, it tells us here that 1 John 3, 3. First John 3, 3. 3, 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself. Even. Even as he is pure. So as believers, we have, we have work to do as children of God. Because we have hope in Christ Jesus. And because we have hope in Christ Jesus, we have to purify ourselves, wash ourselves, wash our heart. 
from the just, wash our heart from the things that is not pertaining to righteousness, because we have a hope in Christ Jesus. Even as he is pure, Christ is pure, and we as children, we also have to be pure, just as how he is pure. Because we are his children and we have to be like our father, have a pure heart. And as I said to you before, the only way we can have a pure heart is God doing the working on the inside. Remember, God can start the work on the inside and we cut it short if we do not allow him to continue to give us that pure heart. Amen? So we as children of God, we have to allow God to come in daily. daily to fix our heart, to remove from us the things that is not of God, because he is able to do it. We cannot do it on the inside, praise for ourselves. Uh, we're looking in Romans, praise God, chapter 2 and verse 29. Romans chapter 2 and mm -hmm. verse 29 reads, mm -hmm. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, mm -hmm. and circumcision is that of the heart. Amen. Amen. In the Stop, right there. Stop right there. So here we see Paul, he was talking to the Romans brethren, and he tell them, but he is Israel, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart. So here we see, as I said before, circumcision is not done outwardly in the New Testament or after the, the birth and death and resurrection of Christ Jesus. It is done by God. Circumcision of the heart, circumcision to remove the foreskin. So when our foreskin is removed from the heart, praise God Almighty, it's a wonderful thing. Okay, here it says here, the deep spiritual meaning of circumcision is it is a work of God upon the heart of human. So this circumcision, it is the working of God upon the heart of his people or anybody who accept him as his personal savior. Read, read. In the spirit Amen. and right. not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Praise God. So it is done in the spirit, by the spirit of the Almighty. He is the one who changed our heart from a vile heart. One of the writers said, oh, remove from me a stony heart and give to me a heart, a fleshy heart. When you have a fleshy heart, it's able, that fleshy heart is able to hear well, to see well, to feel well. That fleshy heart has, praise God Almighty, has a heart, uh, um, it able to absorb the things that are righteous. But a stony heart cannot do that. Amen. A pure heart is able to absorb the things that are of God, the things that are righteous, the things that will cause us to gain eternal life. So it says here, it is in the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Mm -hmm. So in the time of Israel, you know, the Jews, they always boast. Even Paul get caught in it, where they, he said, circumcision availed much. <clears throat> praise God. So therefore, this boasting is not, you, you cannot boast in this, this circumcision of the heart. Because it's not done by the priest in the tabernacle, uh, wherever it's been done. But this circumcision is done by the Spirit of God. And it's God who going to receive the praises. So, praise God. So, the, the, the change of heart or the pureness of heart come through the Spirit of God. By the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. I want to look in Ephesians 4, verse 21 and to 24. Ephesians 
Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, chapter 4. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verse 21 to 24. Ephesians 4, verse 21, reads, If so, be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. So if you have heard of the Son of God and taught in Jesus. Verse 22. Verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Praise the Lord. So here the Bible is saying that we have to put off the former conversation. Praise that the whole man, which is what? Which, which is, is corrupt according to the deceitful loss. Praise the Lord. So that heart, as children of God, we have to put it off. Amen. Because that heart cannot um, please God. Verse 23. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So... To be renewed in the spirit of our mind, it calls for work. We have to work at it. Praise God. We just don't accept Christ like that and we have a pure heart. The word of God is our mirror. And when the word of God been read, it should prick our heart. It should allow us to see ourselves and to put off and to put on Christ. Put on holiness. Put on pureness of heart. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Praise God. So that's a command that we have to be renewed in our mind by the spirit of God. Verse 24. Ephesians 4, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man. Amen. Praise the Lord. So ye have to put on the new man. And the new man is not somebody you take up and put on like a clothes, like a garment. This is the working of the inner man. Amen. Because the Bible tells us that men look at the outward appearance, but God look at our heart. So we can dress fine, but our heart is not right. I can have on my suit and tie, but my heart is not pure. So this dressing of is the inner man, the inner man, which is your heart, which is created after Christ in his image. Praise God. Read on. Yes, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, mm -hmm. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Praise God. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Could read it again for us, please. 24. Ephesians 4, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, mm -hmm. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So, like I said, we have to put on the new man, which is created in God. After which is create um, put on the new the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and truth and holiness, and these things come through Jesus Christ, through His blood, through committing ourselves to Him. Commit thy way to the Lord, and He will establish thy thought. He will establish thy heart in righteousness. So He will. Fix our heart so our heart become pure and holy before him. Transform. Praise God. You know, he said to the apostle Peter, when thou are converted, go and strengthen thy brethren. When your heart is changed, go and strengthen thy brethren. Praise God. So when our heart is pure, we say the right thing. When our heart is pure, if we make a mistake, we can go back and say, you know, I make a mistake and I'm sorry. 
Praise God, forgive me. A pure heart is a, a forgiving heart. A pure heart is a heart that does not keep up things for 25 years and 30 years. A pure heart forget things. It happened, we're going to talk about it, and then, praise God, it's going to end right here. A pure heart is not a heart that slander. Excuse me. A pure heart is a heart that when something went wrong, we talk about it, and the next step, we are going to pray for the person. We are going to ask God blessing on the person to God to bless that one and establish that one. Amen. Praise God. Let us go to 1 Peter 1, verse 22. 1 Peter 1, verse 22. 1 Peter 1, 22. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22 reads, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unframed love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Praise God. So this is a command. See me purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit. Praise God Almighty. So I, I keep on stressing that this is done by the spirit of the Almighty because none of us can go in our heart and fix our heart. Only by faith, only by believing, only by setting our thought, only by asking and by asking God to help us. Amen. So the Apostle Peter says we must uh, read it again for me, please. He says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfriend love of the brethren. Amen. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. <clears throat> Seeing that we love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Loving your brother with a fervent heart. You're, you cannot say you love them this moment and then the next moment you don't love them. Your love for that person got to be steady, got to be constant, day in and day out. It doesn't matter what they do to you. Remember the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. But better yet, the Bible also says when we were enemy of God, God sent forth his son to die for us because God loved us. He was, it doesn't matter what we had done for him. He looked behind that. And the same love we have to have, praise God, the same heart we got to have. We got to have a perfect, and the only way we can obtain this is by having a perfect heart. Amen. We got to love our brothers fervently. Praise God. It doesn't matter what they do have done to us, how they ill treat us. Praise God. In, and also, how do we know we have a pure heart is when things are bad. When everybody uh, against you, when you, you seem like the world don't love you, that's when you prove you have a pure heart. Not when things is good. Praise God. So I'm saying this is the art we got to obtain in Christ Jesus. I remember some years ago I had a, an incident where I was officiating after all held a pass away. And I could see that the brethren, they were tired of me. And I bowed my head. I said, Lord, what must I do? And when I looked to my left, I saw the Holy Spirit walking towards me. Hallelujah. He came up to my right shoulder and he said, turn over the program to the pastor. So I said, Brethren, could you stand up and welcome your pastor and the whole church ignite? <laughs> but then I went on the other side and I sat down and I said, Lord, this is the time to prove if my heart is right. So while everybody was rejoicing, I was there searching my heart. I was searching my heart for grudge, for jealousy, for envy, if I feel or felt any way. And I did not feel no way. 
I said, yes. I don't feel jealous. I, don't feel, I did not feel worried. Glory to God. I did not feel jealous. I said, yes, Lord. By your grace, I'm getting there. So like I said, it's okay when we can pay our rent and all of these things. When our, our, our partner is up and well and everything is well. But when everything starts going upside down, praise God, that's when we prove we have a, a pure heart. Or if we obtain a pure heart, it's not when everybody's, you know, that we have a way as human to put each other on pedestal. So let us say you get put on a pedestal and you get taken down. Praise God. These are the moments. These are the times you prove that you have a pure heart. And if not, that's okay. You can say, Lord, I do not find my heart to be right before you. So I'm asking you to help me to obtain the pure heart according to Matthew uh, 5 and verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And again, a pure heart is a heart that is clean, clear, in the natural sense that something is lawful to be eaten or used, referring to spiritual, spirituality. It are uh, a pure heart, free from the pollution and guilt of sin. Glory to God. So a pure heart is free from the pollution of guilt and of sin. That's a pure heart. When we have nothing in our heart that will condemn us. Uh, as I'm talking to you, the scripture came back to me. Bible says, if your heart condemn you, condemn you, oh, great is your condemnation. But if your heart does not condemn you, then you can go on with Christ. So the pure in heart, they are the ones who see God. And I'm saying on this platform that every child of God should see God. To obtain that pure heart in God. Because when we have a pure heart, we do not put down each other. We are not negative towards each other. We support each other. We support the weak. That's what a pure heart does. And if you cannot, you pray, hallelujah, with all sincerity, glory to God, and all peace. So, my beloved brethren and friends, Seek to obtain a pure heart before God. Praise God. A heart that is pure and clean before the Almighty. And God will work for us. He will, you will feel his, his romance. You will feel his presence when you have that pure heart. He won't be far from you. He always will be near. Amen. Because God loves everyone. And he, praise God, he want every one of us to have a pure heart before him. Because without a pure heart, no man shall see God. Praise God. In brief, I just want to go to St. John 17, 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. And it reads, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. So the word of God is truth. And if, if we um, keep the word of God in us, then we are sanctified by the word of God. In other words, we are made clean. In Exodus 19, God told Moses to tell the people to wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. In, during that time, most things were done outwardly. In the New Testament, after the death and burial and resurrection of Christ, it's done inwardly. Amen. And the way we can be sanctified is through the word of God, which is the word of truth. Praise God in Psalms. 1 one nineteen and I believe verse 11. You could read it for me. Please praise God. 
Psalm 119. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119, verse 11. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Hallelujah. That I might not sin against thee. So here the patriarch David saying, Lord, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Why? Because the word of God, once we hid the word of God in our heart, when everything, anything that is wrong comes up, the word of God is there to counteract it. Right away we say, no, but that is not of God. The word of God says so. So we use the word of God to, to maintain the, our pureness of heart. David said, a word of I hid in my, my heart that I may not sin against God. Because the word of God is truth. The word of God is power. God said to Jeremiah, it's not my word like an hammer that break the rock in two. Praise God. In Hebrew, he said, my word, praise God, is a two-edged sword that cut asunder to bone and giant and marrow. Praise God. So the word of God is what uh, we use to keep our heart clean or to obtain a pure heart. Repeat the word of God in our heart daily as we drive down the road, as we go along life journey. We repeat the word of God in our heart. Jesus Christ says, sanctify them through their word because their word is the truth. So we have to keep the word of truth in our heart. It's not only to read it and have it on our lips. A lot of us know the Bible, but it's not in us. In our younger days in the church of God, we always want the Bible in us. Praise God. You know, so when somebody reads the Bible, we can tell exactly where it's coming from. And that's good. But we want our inner man to produce the word of God. Jesus Christ said, praise God, that we should bear more fruit. And the only way we can bear fruit and bear fruit more abundantly, hallelujah, is when every time we obtain that pure heart. And that pure heart is true Christ Jesus. Only him can help us. Hallelujah. Only him can do the work. Hey, he tell us that no man, praise God, he said, unless you abide in me and my words abide in you, because we of ourselves can't do nothing. We have to abide in the truth. And when we abide in the truth, then the truth begins to fix us, begin to fashion us. Hallelujah. Begin to turn us into that person that God wants us to do. Begin to change our heart into a pure heart. And that's what we want. Praise God, because we are God investment, God invests in us. And when he comes, he's looking for us to give him, praise God, some increase on what he, he left, the investment that he left. Glory to God. So God is looking for us to obtain that pure heart. And the only way to obtain that pure heart is to constantly knock him at Christ, knock him at heaven's door, knock him ask God, to fix our heart, to take away the just, to take away the things that would condemn us to hell. So I'm saying to us, let us not fool around with our salvation. Let us work, ask God to work on the inner man so we can please him. God, he tell the woman at the well, say, God seeks such to worship him. Those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the only way we can worship God and it become effective is when our heart is pure. And when we obtain that pure heart, glory to God. So God is able to fix us. So my beloved brethren and friends, and for those who are out of God and Christ, the word is, get the word of God in your heart. So he can fix you. Hallelujah. So you can turn away the word of God without help you turn away from the ungodliness. Amen. And those who are in God and Christ, the word of God will keep us in God and in Christ. Glory to God. Because this is the book, the map to God's kingdom, the word of God, the GPS. And one of the attributes we must have a pure heart. We are to ask for obtain, ask God for, to help us to obtain a pure heart. And when we have that pure heart, we must 
maintain it. No matter how long. Praise God. To go back. Remember I said in the beginning. That King Saul. God gave him a new heart. Holy Ghost. But he messed it. Messed up that pure heart. And he messed up that new heart. That was given to him by God. The Bible says when David. Or when King Saul was returning from. Uh, war. And the woman they sing. Says Saul had slain his thousand, but David ten thousand. The Bible says envy ten times to his heart. Amen. So that's another topic anyway about how to maintain the pure heart. Amen. So after we obtain the pure heart, we have to maintain it because it can get corrupt again. Amen. So the pure heart, my beloved brethren and friends, seek glory to God to obtain that pure heart. In God and Christ. Because he is depending on us. He invests in us. And when he returns. He is looking for that investment. Do not allow nobody in this world. To stop you from obtaining that pure heart in Christ Jesus. Do not allow nobody. Don't allow me, your wife, your husband, your children. Nothing in this world. To hinder you from obtaining that pure heart. Because God is able to change our heart, change us from our vile behavior. Amen. And being in church for 20 years doesn't mean you have a pure heart. Hallelujah. One has to seek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For that pure heart. So God can dwell in you freely. You don't want God to dwell in you and thinking about exiting. You want him to stay in us because that's our, he's our comfort, he's our peace. And remember, I was a sinner and I know what it is to be miserable. I know what it is to be seeking. But when I, God began to change my heart, I appreciate it. So my beloved brethren, seek for, to obtain a pure heart before God. Seek in prayer and fasting. In asking, pray for yourself. Pray for your heart. When anything come up that is not of God. Ask him to remove it. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to ask um, if there's any questions.